Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to this video tutorial on simplifying Java for OOP1 students of King Faisal University and for others who want to learn Java. This is part 11 in this series and is entitled Multidimensional Arrays in Java. The arrays that we use in part 10 have only one column, but we can have an array with more than one column. This array is a multidimensional array, specifically, it's a two dimensional array with rows and columns. We declare two-dimensional arrays by using two sets of open and closed square brackets. The first example is a two-dimensional array of integers with five rows and three columns. The second example has specified values of elements with three rows shown by the three groups of values enclosed by braces and four columns shown by the number of values in each group. Let's do activity number 19 where we will create a Java class that will ask a user to enter 6 integers in a 2x3 array. We will get the sum of all the elements and we will display the sum. Our input will be the 6 numbers from our 2-dimensional array of 2 rows and 3 columns. Notice that there are 2 loops in our process and the second loop is actually inside the first loop. The first loop represents the rows and the second loop the columns. The user will enter first the elements of row 0, then row 1. Since we are talking about the sum of all the elements, we can already get the sum as we receive the number inputs from the user. We must not forget to initialize the sum to 0. Finally, our output will be the sum of all the elements. Let's call this project sum of array. We will use J option pin for this activity, so we need to input J option pin from jabax.swing. Let's declare our array of integers. Let's call it nums is equal to new. Type integer, two rows, and three columns. We need to declare three more integer variables, sum, which we should initialize to zero, and x and y for the indexes. Let's write our loops. The outer loops representing the row. And the inner loop representing the columns. Now we will accept the elements for array nums, row x, column y. We're going to use J option pane and remember that the result is a string so we need to convert it to integer using integer that parse int. Now we'll use J option pane show input dialog. We will format it a little bit. Enter value for element x plus plus y index plus the closing I will get the sum go to nums x y now we will display the sum using J option pane show message dialog. So let's try our program. We need to enter six numbers. So let's start with 1, 2, 3. After this, we will now move to the second row or index 1, 4, 5, 6. And there it goes, the result, the sum of all the elements is 21. Now let's move to activity number 20. We're going to revise the class in the previous activity. After all numbers have been entered, we will get the sum of all the elements for every row 
and then we will display the results. Notice that we have to enter all the numbers first before we get the sum. So that is what we're going to do. Our input is still the same 2 by 3 array of integers. To do that, we will be needing again the two for statements, one for the row and another for the column. And all that it will do is to accept every element. The next set of loops is the process to get the sum of the elements. We start with the loop for the row. Notice that the first thing that we do before getting the sum of the columns for every row is to set the sum to zero. The output is the sum for each row. We will write that after getting the sum. So there are three statements that we will do for every row. Initialize the sum to zero, get the sum of the elements for that row, and display the sum. Now let's revise our program. I will start by copying these two loop statements to save me from the burden of typing again. <laughs> now we don't need to get the sum in this set of looping statement. It's purely for entering the elements. And for the copied loop, we don't need this because that's already done above. We must not forget to initialize the sum to zero. And to display the result for every row. The sum of all the elements for row x. is a sum. Let's run our program. We enter the values 1, 2, and 3 for row 0, and the values 4, 5, and 6 for row 1. Now the results. The sum of all the elements for row 0 is 6, and then the sum of all the elements for row 1 is 15. Good job. Let's proceed to activity number 21. We will create a Java class that will ask a user to enter the grades of three students in their three courses using RA. We will compute and display their averages. So our input is an array of grades with three rows representing the three students and three columns representing the number of courses. We can input the grades by still using the two for statements, one for the row and the other for the column. Looking at our process, there are four statements that we have to do for every row. First is that we set the sum to zero. Second, we get the sum of the grades. Third, we compute for the average. And fourth, we display the average of that student. The output is the average of each student. Let's name our project student grades. Let's use the console for this project. So let's import java.util.scanner. Let's instantiate scanner. Let's declare our array of grids. and the other variables. The average has to be float or double. Now the statements for inputting the grades.
we'll put the value in the array using scanner done with the inputting now let's start with the processing the loop for the row now there are four things that we have to do for every row one is to initialize the sum to zero next is to get the sum of the grades Third is to compute for the average. And the last is to display the average. Let's run our program. Let's see. 89, 90, and 92 for the first student. 90, 95, and 100 for the second student. 87, 86, and 85 for the third student. So the average of student 0 is 90. 95 for 1 and 86 for 2. Well done. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Masalama.